Well, good afternoon, family. Well, good afternoon, hold up family. I'm trying to get this thing together. How are you this evening? Glory to God. How are you, family? How are you? How are you? How are you? This is the day that the Lord has made. I will and you will rejoice and be glad in it as always. I said I would come back on with a word. I do have one, so we're going to get right into it. Word of encouragement for today is royalty, raising our youth as leaders to yield. Let's say it again. Royalty, R-O-Y-A-L-T-Y, -Y, raising our youth as leaders to yield. Amen. So before we begin, let us pray. Heavenly Father, I come to you again. I thank you, Lord God, for this day that you have made. I thank you for this time, Lord God, with my social media family, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we decrease, I decrease as well, so you can increase in me. Let your word penetrate, Lord God, us to the core. Lord God, give us what we need, Lord God, and we just thank you in advance for it. Lord, we thank you for all that you've done and you do and you continue to do. So have your way now with us, in us, and among us. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. So go with me, our key scripture. Go with me to uh, Romans 8, 5 through 6. I will be coming from um, the NIV version. But before I begin, I want to give some shout outs real quick. First and foremost, happy birthday to my daughter and love, my Cresha Veen. Much love. I am so blessed to have another daughter. I tell you, she's my daughter. And I love her so much. And I am so grateful to see and have watched her life and to see what God is doing. And um, anyway, I ain't getting mushy on here on Facebook. But anyway, um, happy birthday. Also, I want to give a shout out to my um, church family, Set the Captives Free Outreach Center, and to um, Elder Dwight Parker. I tell you, he fed us good today on prayer, um, of con the prayer of consecration and dedication. I tell you, it was such a meaty word. And also, um, social media family, for some of you, I invite you if you're in the Baltimore area to come out and visit me and my church family. I would love to introduce you to them, to um, Apostle Karen and Pastor Linwood and the Dream Team and all the leaders um, and um, our visitors and uh, to feed you right. We're not a perfect church and we're not perfect members, but we are perfect in God. I'm telling you, we don't play. You hear me? We will take care of you and feed you right. And um, definitely uh, make sure that you mature and grow and give you a solid foundation on the word of God. Amen. So big shout outs to um, Elder Dwight Parker. I tell you, it was a good meaty word today. That was a meat eater word. But glory to God. Um, boy, if you know how much he blessed me. But anyway, let me get into it because, you know, y'all, um, I've been doing good. I ain't been being long winded and keeping y'all on all long and deep. You know, y'all know how I can go. But I did wanted to give shout outs to them and of course to my family and my friends and they know who they are. I ain't got time to go to, you know, they know how I get. And look, I ain't giving all these shout outs. Some of them was like, why you don't call my name out? Look, because <laughs> I some, some of them I talk to almost every day. So I'm like, look, I don't need to shout you out because you will be shouting me out and getting on my nerves in a few minutes. But anyway. Um, I love my family and friends. I tell you, my church family, big shout out to them. But again, if you're in the Baltimore, Maryland, come to 7111 Windsor Boulevard, Baltimore, Maryland, 21244. Come and see us and I will gladly be introducing you to them and we'll feed you right and I'll hug you up and, you know, and uh, get a good word from the Lord. Amen. Now, let's move on real quick because I'm for real because I'm going to do this real good. I, I am. I'm with the Lord's help. We're going to get through this word because I'm be honest. I'm hungry. So <laughs> that is true. I am hungry, but I am excited. God said I got to release this word. But all right, for real, let's get to it. Teresa, get focused. 
um, the Lord puts this on my spirit, uh, raising our youth as leaders to yield. Are we really? That's, that, I mean, family, let's keep it real. Are we really, some of us, are we really raising our youth to be leaders? And I said royalty. I put on, I, I, I said royal at first. The word was royal. And then I asked the Lord, you know, to yield. And he was like, they need to learn to listen. Some of our youth need to learn how to yield and surrender and listen and obey and serve. Amen. So brothers and sisters, um, go with me. Let's start with our key scriptures, Romans 8, 5 through 6. And then we're going to see, um, drop down to verses 16 and 18. I will be coming from the NIV version. Give me one second. All right. And it says... From the NIV version, those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on what the flesh desires. But those who live in accordance with the flesh, with the spirit have their minds set on what the spirit desires. The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace. Amen. Jump down to verse 16 and 18. Verse 16 through 18 says, The Spirit himself testify with our spirit that we are God's children. Now, if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we share in his sufferings in order that we may also share in his glory. I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed to us. Oh, all oh, that was delicious. Amen. So brothers and sisters, the Bible often presents two ways for us to live. In our text, Paul describes two different lives, two different lives, two different mindsets, and two different conditions. The word flesh in our text is meant to is meant the corruption of nature. Excuse me. There is a difference between being in and after the flesh and the flesh being in us. That, um, Raymond, hold up. Okay, let me go back, family. I got it. I got it. Because I was moving stuff around. Let's try this again, what I wrote. I said that the Bible often presents two ways for us to live. In our text, Paul describes two different lives, two different mindsets, and two different conditions. The word flesh in our text meant the corruption of nature. There is a difference between being in and after the flesh and the flesh being in us. The flesh in terms we are speaking of, again, are those that have a corrupt nature in them and whom that is the governing principle whose minds are carnal and who walk who walk in conversation is such. So when we look at our scripture for, you know, our key scripture, we're talking about walking in a corrupt nature, your flesh. Because can we agree that our flesh, I'm telling you, sometimes is like whack. Amen. Even as adults. So as parents... As a parent, as a sister, as a friend, a confidant, which all of us are wearing many hats, we have to watch out and help our children. Help the generation coming up now. Lord, help us say royalty. We have to display royalty, brothers and sisters. We have to set the standard like never before, but we must also be willing to listen to them as well as work with them. Stop being so hard and dismissive of our youth for they do at times have some great ideas and a lot of our youth are full of potential. Amen. But our youth, this is to the youth. Your first assignment is to learn how to listen, how to obey and serve. Amen. Say royalty. Now, I say all that to say, because you as leaders, as all of us, to be an excellent, effective leader in whatever area God has called you to do in life. 
Wait a minute. Hold up, y'all. Let me see. Shit. Pray the Lord Church. Okay, something was going on. Anyway, um, as to be an excellent, effective uh, leader, sir, first of all, you have to learn how to serve. And uh, brothers and sisters, as us, now let me let me come at it like this. This is to the parents. Parents, in order to have an effective, an excellent, effective leader, because we're ra you're raising your child, you have to be excellent and effective. You have to show that. You have to demonstrate that. You have to explain that. Amen. Also, our, to our youth, you have to listen. Some of y'all don't listen at all some of you and i'm talking to the young adults i'm talking from the age bracket of 18 to 30 because that's the bracket right there where is though once you reach 18 y'all like you know you grown do what you want to do but i'm here to encourage you that you're going to have to learn how to yield meaning you're going to have to learn how to listen and be submissive but first and foremost, you have to learn. If you learn how to get it right with God first, it's easy to detect when God shows you the people that you should be yielding and being submissive to. And first and foremost, you should be because God, because without God using them to bring you here, you should be submissive to your parents, to your caregivers. Amen. So, um, Learn to be submissive. You have to learn to listen. You have to learn to obey and you have to learn to serve. Being a leader, it ain't all about thinking you going to point the finger and telling everybody and trying to crack the whip. No, you know, great leaders. Now, there are crooked leaders. We know that. Amen. I don't want to get into that. So stay on track, Teresa. We have those that, um, you know, don't have the best interests of the people they are leading at heart. They don't. And sad to say that we have that. But as a child of God and um, as a believer, it is your job to first be honest with you and be honest with God and let God work in you if you can trust god oh lord because i this is this i'm gonna ready to put my own self out there he will help you to learn how to and be able to receive and trust people now i say that to say and this is a transparent thought and because of what i've been through and my um uh, you know, being in a di very dysfunctional family and abusive as uh, far as my childhood. So trust is a very, very, I take it very seriously. And I don't, I, you know, I struggle in that area. Not like I used to when I, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm getting better, you know, but I'm still funny acting, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I stay in the face of God to lead and guide me and to be open, keeping myself open to receive from those that he sent to me. Amen. And uh, because you don't know what the other person has for you. And not only that, that person could be the blessing that you need to help you as you journey on. But now to our parents, you have to be transparent. To the point of when you are setting examples, because especially when they're young, you know, first and foremost, if you get it right with God, you know what I'm saying? Get it right with God first, because it'll come back and bite you in the tail if you're the type of parent always like do as I say, not as I do. Because we know children watching, not just children watching, everybody watching, somebody. Amen. So, to um, to walk into royalty, like the Bible, I mean, like our word said in verse 16, that we are, hold up, it done. Okay, 
like they said, the spirit himself testifies that our spirit, that we are God's children. We are children, then we are heirs. We are heirs to God and co-heirs with Christ. We are royalty. See what I'm saying? And to obtain royalty, there is a certain level and it's a, it's, it's, it's a certain way to act. When you have been favored by God and the royalty, because you are heir now, you are joint heirs with Christ, can't be acting all crazy. You can't be, there are certain things that, how can I say, help me Holy Ghost, help me Holy Spirit right here. Uh, when you really, I'm going to put it to you like this, and when you really receive God, you really let him be Lord over your life. He's going to start a work. And Elder Dwight hit on this today. He's going to start a work from the inside. And he's going to change some things. But you have to be in an agreement to let those things, ha those changes happen. Because you can't be shady. You can't be the worldly way and then expect God to bless you. It doesn't happen that way. It, that, that, that's not how it go down. You can't think that you're going to live your life worldly and think that you, God is going to give you godly things and give you godly ble and bless you. No. You're going to have to learn to listen, obey, and serve. You're going to have to learn to do what God says do, when he says, how he says. I know some of your youth, you know, especially today, um, you know, uh, have a very, um, very, y'all, some of you, some of the youth I've been speaking to are very straightforward when it comes to church and church people. I've, you know, I've talked with some and they are very, um, some of them, and it comes from a pain within. And then, of course, it comes from a lot of times they just don't know. They haven't seen church modeled or I'm not going to say church, but if they have not seen God model in their home, you trying to get them into the presence of God. Sometimes it is. It's like pulling teeth. But if you are serious about uh, walking with God, it becomes easy. It does. And I'm here to encourage you today that a life with God, I'm telling you, is the best decision you can ever make. Besides, once you finish in school and you're entering into college and you're finding your way and finding your path and for his career, that's one thing. But you're going to need God. It is the Holy Spirit that helps you to make those choices. We need him. And sometimes the world says something told me. No, his name is the Holy Spirit. Without him, he could not have given you the ability to make the choices that you make. Amen. He does. He helps us to make those choices. So when you have to decide on what college, you got uh, two good colleges or even, you know, any decision, it's the Holy Spirit that assists you in making those decisions. And so to parents, you need to help your child. You need to really be transparent and introduce them to the Holy Spirit. Introduce them to God. Amen. And um, yeah, it could be a struggle, but I promise you, you know, that the more it's like exercise, the more you cast the cares and you turn over all your worries over to God. It's smooth sailing. Will you, will you have ups and downs? Yes, you will. But there's a favor that comes upon your life and God gets very, very happy and blessings will come from nowhere. I mean, just, I mean, he just, that's because that, that's how he loves. Your mind can't conceive how God loves you. Some of you can't even understand why you're still here. Because one thing I will tell you about God that I know for myself is whatever he says, it is so. And he is not his word, whatever he speaks, is not coming back to him, boy. If he promised you something, if he said it's going to happen, it's going to happen. Amen. So, I 
got four tips and guess what i'm done <laughs> amen oh the sister is done so again royalty raising our youth to learn to yield so also i want to say as um you know it's wonderful um also i it's not that or um our youth sometimes uh people they you know uh don't want to listen to the youth you know but some of them they are very you know um they are very intelligent very they got some good ideas you know and uh <laughs> they um you know they're full of life and potential but they just need solid direction and one thing i'm also learning with this generation and my children has helped me i have young adults now 25 and 22 so i don't have no babies so it's a whole double you know when they were young society when i had them society back in the 90s society was different the economy everything was different now you know they keep me up i gotta stay up with them they are they they know it's like hustling with me. i'm like for real i got to keep moving with them you know that i'm so glad that they keep me up and you know because today when i think back when i was young you know and like i had told them you know we ain't had no cell phone some of y'all 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 go without your cell phone y'all lose your everlasting mind <laughs> i mean y'all go crazy or if y'all can't have technology i was like boy please i grew up when technology would when it was pay phone ain't no pages or no beepers or nothing like that was out back then we ain't had no phone you had you had to pay phones but anyway here are my four um oh and um here go my four tips but also um transparent thought you know, uh, the other day I did go and see, um, I put out a post that I went to see the movie Black Panther because I was curious. I was, I wanted to know, and Marvel Comics is not, you know, I'm not uh, into it like that, but I wanted to know what the hype was all about. I mean, the movie is, I mean, from the reviews and stuff, it's, it's, it's making money. It's blowing out you know movies theaters so i'm like okay i got to see for myself you know other people has been telling me you know what it was about you know like far as it's a good movie you know so me i go see for myself so i went to see black panther by myself and um i'm telling you to my surprise i really enjoyed the movie i really did and uh what was important what um what my takeaways from the movie was and which also led to my word of encouragement about royalty is that um uh throughout the movie it showed they showed unity but even against when he when um I forget the actor name, but when he, when it was his time for him to be king, because his father had passed or his father was killed or whatever. And there was a scene, I'm just going to just say this much for those that didn't see, but there was a part where um, he said that he wasn't ready. You know, he was honest. And the fact was probably because of how he, you know, knowing that his father was gone, he wasn't ready to take his place. But even though in the natural he was trained he was educated i mean you know he was taught everything that he needed to do to accept the position as king but to be an excellent effective king he had to yield amen he had to yield and be submissive to it yet even though the throne was rightfully his it was rightfully his because of him being what i say like the scripture he was joint heirs his father had passed he was the heir so he was next in line to be king regardless but he was very honest and accurate about himself that he wasn't ready so to say all that to say and you know um 
royalty i mean was displayed you know i, I just love the way he 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 yielded and then next thing you know he walked it out he was able to walk into that position so i say unto you my young my my parents you know and to the young we are raising you to be leaders to learn how to yield don't try to be a you know be out there jumping out there lead folks thinking as a leader you gotta do what i say i'm whatever and an excellent leader is a leader that is able to listen have an open and teachable spirit don't be all hot-headed and you know and don't get the big head you know because things has a way of wearing out always be teachable and one and another thing stay humble stay humble and me, and most importantly though before any of those things ever happen get a relationship with god first amen so god can help navigate you throughout your studies throughout your life throughout whatever you choose to do or whatever you uh, feel that you want to change and conquer someone told me I um, we were talking about it because we heard it on um, I forget what pastor was talking about it I was watching on TV but he presented a question he like sometimes we say to our children you know when you see kids you say what you want to be when you grow up he said now we have to rechange the question and say what you want to change amen when you grow up see that breaks it down what you want to change what you want to see that's changed in the world today amen so here's my four tips oh lord what i did with them okay here's my my four tips i'm gonna leave y'all with some tips um on walking in royalty amen number one Listen and give glory to God. No matter what the situation or season you're in when dealing with people, it is important to say thank you. Regardless, for as a child of God, this should always be a part of our response because only through him do we have the ability to do anything and everything. I'm going to say that again. My four tips. Tip number one, listen and give glory to God no matter what season, no matter what situation or season you're in when dealing with people. It is important to say thank you regardless. For as a child of God, this should always be a part of our response because only through him do we have the ability to do anything and everything. Number two, when giving, when giving or giving compliments, always view them as encouragement. Sometimes compliments are affirmations of your character or accomplishments. View it not as others praising you, but as seeing God at work in and through you. Perceive this as evidence that God is at work using you. Number three, don't diminish compliments. Receiving compliments is difficult. It can be hard to accept when you feel like you your work has been less than stellar or it felt too routine to be praiseworthy that being said to be determined to be truth i mean i'm sorry be determined to be truthfully thankful that others take the time to say a kind word the goal is to remain gracious and let your response be seasoned with the love of christ i know that's a mouthful number four speak the truth in love as a Christian, we should speak words of grace and truth to one another. You can look at 1 Peter 3.15 on that one. The words we use are a reflection of what's in our hearts. This means that if we are going to criticize others, whether in private or in public, we should be swift to praise them as well. There is no room for double standard because as a child of God, we are to love one another and show it in a practical and practical ways. Compliments are one way to praise and celebrate the work of God's grace in each other's lives for his glory. So your four tips is to listen and give glory to God. Number two, when giving or giving compliments, always view them as encouragement. 
Number three, don't diminish compliments. And number four, speak the truth in love. Amen. Those are your four tips in walking in royalty. Those are four tips you can apply, brothers and sisters, as we are raising our youth as leaders to yield. Amen. We teach them first. Help them to yield to the word of God first. Help them to yield to the voice of God. Yield to the Holy Spirit. Tell them they have no reason to fear. You have to tell them and you have to model it. They have no reason to fear God at all. Have a reverence, respect for him. But God doesn't give us a spirit of fear. He gives us a spirit and he gives us a sound and clear mind. Amen. Help your children. Help these youth today. Stop being so hard on them. Stop being so dismissive on them. Amen. Stop criticizing them. Stop shooting them down. Help them. Don't just shut them and throw them away. Amen. But also to the youth, you need to learn how to listen. Don't be so quick to have an attitude. Don't be so quick to pop off at the mouth. When someone's trying to speak with you, never be disrespectful because you don't know who mama or brother or sister, because that's somebody's mother or brother or sister. And you wouldn't want nobody talking to your mama, brother or sister like that. Amen. So always be respectful. Always be humble. And if you develop a relationship and receive God as your Lord and Savior in your life, he will guide you. And he will keep you and no weapon formed against you will ever prosper. And every tongue that rises against will be silenced and condemned. God will take care of your enemies. He'll make your enemies your footstool. He'll set a table so that your enemies will have to eat those words. You just have to learn to be obedient to the word of God. Do what God says when he says how he says do it. Yield to your parents. Yield to your leaders and coaches or whomever that the Lord leads in your life to help you according to whatever you choose to do in life you want to have to learn to yield and then as you be in as you can yield you can also lead effectively and excellency when there are people who will be drawn to you and when god draws people to you you don't get caught up you stay focused on the fact on the goal is to point them right to god amen because you don't get all the glory he does because without him we can't do anything we can't do nothing amen let us pray Heavenly Father, thank you again, Lord God, for this time with my social media family. I thank you for this word that you've given us to help us as parents, as sisters, aunts, uncles, cousins, you know, if if we're um, overseeing or have any connection with younger kids or the youth, Lord God. I thank you for this word to help and remind us, Lord God, to how to help them to seek your face and not your hand. Lord, let this word penetrate the hearts and minds of everyone who may see this video, Lord God, and draw them closer unto you. Lord, I thank you so much for every life that is connected to me. I thank you for every youth that is connected to me in the name of Jesus. Lord, I just ask that you continue to help us, Lord God, to be all which you created us to be. Lord, help us to continue to have an ear to hear. Help us to continue to keep our spirits open unto your word. Help us, Lord God, to be able to shut our flesh down, Lord God, and to not walk in you know, our flesh, because our flesh is corrupt. Lord God, help us to be able to exchange our weaknesses for your strength. Lord God, when it comes to the temptations that the enemy may try to bring to us, Lord God. So I bind up all distractions of any kind. I bind up any weapons or attacks that the enemy may have upon my social media family and everyone connected unto me in the name of Jesus. Lord, I decree and declare today that your word will be done, that your will will be done over all of their lives. Lord, help them to learn how to yield to your voice speak into their spirits tonight lord god reveal yourself to them in a mighty way lord let them know that you love them and that's all that matters in jesus name amen 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 it has been well as always it has been wonderful um i really really appreciate and love each and every one of you for your support I can't do it without you. I'm telling you, I need you and you need me. I'm telling you, that's the way God made it to be. We do need each other. But um, again, to my, our, my youth, our youth, this next generation, these 
you know, God bless the mothers that are having, you know, bringing life, you know, when there is life coming, you know, God's still at work. And um, God bless y'all because I'm out of that business because having babies ain't no joke. Maybe <laughs> I had two, you know, non-medicated. So I know what you're going through, ladies. But, uh, you know, um, it is uh, we do have some wonderful youth. They, some of them are just misguided. And um, if you know, let the spirit of the Lord help you to help them if it's, you know, if it's God's will. And I'm um, just, you know, model to the youth. You know, you have to show God, you know, just like someone introduced you to him. You have to introduce you to the youth. And like, again, I say to the youth, you just stay humble and you just have an ear to hear and be willing to receive from God. Because I'm telling you, a life with God, a baby, ain't nothing in this world can compare to that. Eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard. The human mind can't even conceive what God will do for those that love you. Not just for us, but for you too. Amen. So I love y'all so much. God bless y'all. I will be back on, of course, as always. And um, I thank you for all your prayers and comments. And, you know, um, uh -oh, I'm trying to fix y'all. Oh, yeah. I thank you for all your prayers and comments and um, just uh, some of the conversations and the support and words of wisdom. I really, really do appreciate it. But um, I want y'all to have a wonderful, wonderful day. Um, enjoy your family. Take care of yourself you know, and be a blessing, okay, be a blessing to someone, you know, let your light shine, you know, sometimes we are harder on ourselves, or sometimes, like I do, think that you don't have some, you know, nothing to offer, or what could you really be, you know, bless somebody with, but you be surprised, you know, and of course, we all know that comes from, we all come from different backgrounds and upbringing, but with God, I'm telling you, we are all important, we all matter, and, um, Whatever God tells you to do, just do it. Amen. So I love y'all so much. Mwah, mwah, mwah. God bless each and every one of you. Have a wonderful and blessed day. And I will see y'all soon, okay? God bless you.